I can provide some general information. But please note that I am not a certified tax professional, and tax laws can change over time. As of my last training cutoff in September 2021, here are some general. Guidelines for writing off expenses related to running a YouTube channel focused on travel. 1. Business Expenses vs. Personal Expenses You can deduct expenses that are considered ordinary and necessary for your business. This includes costs directly related to producing and promoting your content. 2. Travel Expenses If you travel for business-related purposes, for example, to create content for your YouTube channel, you may be able to deduct expenses such as airfare, lodging, meals, and transportation while at your destination. 3. Meals and Entertainment You can deduct a percentage of your meal expenses when they are directly related to your business activities. Generally, you can deduct 50% of the cost of meals. 4. Accommodations You can generally deduct the cost of hotel stays if they are necessary for your business activities. 5. Transportation This includes expenses related to getting to and from your travel destinations, such as airfare, rental cars, and public transportation. 6. Record Keeping It's crucial to keep detailed records of all your expenses, including receipts, to substantiate your deductions in case of an audit. 7. Home Office Deduction If you use a portion of your home exclusively for your YouTube channel activities, you may be eligible for a Home Office Deduction. 8. Equipment and Supplies you can generally deduct the cost of equipment and supplies used for your business, such as cameras, laptops, microphones, etc. 9. Professional Advice It's advisable to consult a tax professional or accountant who is familiar with your specific situation and the tax laws in your jurisdiction. They can provide you with the most accurate and up-to-date advice. 10. Keep abreast of tax law changes. Tax laws can change, so it's important to stay informed about any updates that may affect your business. Asset depreciation. Asset depreciation is an accounting and tax concept that reflects the reduction in the value of a tangible or intangible asset over time due to wear and tear, obsolescence, or other factors. Depreciation allows businesses to allocate the cost of an asset over its useful life, rather than expensing the entire cost in the year of purchase. Depreciation is essential for accurately reflecting the cost of assets. On a company's financial statements and for calculating tax deductions over time, there are different methods for calculating depreciation, with two common methods being 1. Straight Line Depreciation This method allocates an equal amount of depreciation expense each year over the asset's useful life. The formula for straight line depreciation is cost of asset salvage value useful life. 2. Immediate Depreciation also known as Bonus Depreciation or Section 179 Deduction Immediate depreciation allows a business to deduct a significant portion of the asset's cost in the year of purchase. This can provide an immediate tax benefit. Pros and Cons of Immediate Depreciation vs. 5-Year Depreciation Immediate Appreciation Pros 1. Tax Benefits Immediate depreciation can provide businesses with a significant tax deduction in the year of purchase. Reducing taxable income and potentially resulting in lower tax liability. 2. Cash flow. It can help with cash flow management by allowing you to deduct a substantial portion of the asset's cost upfront, which can be particularly beneficial for small businesses. 3. 
stimulating investment. Immediate depreciation policies are often used by governments to encourage business investment in capital assets. Cons 1. Reduced future deductions While you get a significant deduction upfront, you will have reduced deductions in future years since the cost of the asset has already been expensed. 2. Complexity Managing immediate depreciation requires careful record-keeping and compliance with tax regulations, which can be complex. 5-Year Depreciation Pros 1. Steady deductions. With a 5-year depreciation strategy, you get a more predictable and steady stream of deductions over the asset's useful life. 2. Accurate Asset Valuation it provides a more accurate representation of the asset's value on the balance sheet. 3. Reduce tax complexity. It may be simpler to manage and may reduce the risk of audit associated with aggressive tax strategies. Cons 1. Delayed tax benefits. You don't get the same immediate tax benefits as with immediate depreciation, which can impact cash flow. 2. Economic impact. It might be less effective in stimulating immediate investment compared to policies like bonus depreciation. The choice between immediate depreciation and a five-year depreciation strategy depends on your business's financial needs, cash flow, and tax planning goals. Some businesses may prefer the immediate tax benefits to boost cash flow while others may opt for five-year depreciation for more consistent deductions and accurate asset valuation. It's advisable to consult with a tax professional or accountant to determine which approach is most suitable for your specific circumstances. Good debt and bad debt are terms used to describe the nature of the debt and its impact on your financial situation. These concepts help differentiate between debts that can be beneficial and contribute positively to your overall financial well-being and debts that can be detrimental. Here's an explanation of each. Good it. Good it typically refers to borrowing money for investments or assets that have the potential to increase in value or generate income over time. Here are some characteristics of good debt. 1. Investment in assets. Good debt is often used to acquire assets that can appreciate or provide long-term value. Examples include student loans for education that enhances earning potential, mortgages for real estate and business loans for business expansion. 2. Low interest rates. Good debt tends to come with relatively low interest rates making it more affordable over the long term. 3. Tax deductibility. Some forms of good debt, like mortgage interest or certain student loan interest, may be tax deductible, providing additional financial benefits. 4. Long-term benefits. The use of good debt is associated with long-term financial benefits such as increased earning potential, home, equity, or business growth. 5. Responsible borrowing. Responsible management of good debt. Involves making regular, on-time payments and not overextending your borrowing capacity. Bad it, bad it, on the other hand, refers to borrowing money for purposes that do not contribute to your financial well-being and may result in financial problems. Here are some characteristics of bad debt. 1. Consumer debt. Bad debt is often associated with consumer purchases, such as credit card debt for non-essential items like vacations, luxury goods, or daily expenses. These purchases do not appreciate or generate income. 2. High interest rates. Bad debt usually comes with high interest rates, making it costly over time. 3. No tax benefits. Unlike good debt, bad debt typically doesn't offer any tax advantages. 
4. Short-Term Gratification The use of bad debt provides short-term gratification, but does not contribute to long-term financial stability or growth. 5. Risk of Over-Indebtedness Accumulating bad debt without a plan to pay it off can lead to financial stress and a cycle of debt that is challenging to break. In summary, good debt involves borrowing money for purposes that have the potential to enhance your financial situation in the long run, often at favorable terms. Examples include education, real estate and business investments. Bad debt involves borrowing for non-essential, often high-interest purchases that do not contribute to your financial well-being and can lead to financial difficulties. Responsible financial management involves minimizing bad debt and using good debt strategically to achieve your financial goals. Investing in Bitcoin and Ethereum or other cryptocurrencies does not neatly fit into either the category of good debt or bad debt. These investments are not forms of debt, but rather investments in assets or currencies. The classification of such investments depends on your financial goals, risk tolerance, and how you approach them. Here's a breakdown. Investing in Bitcoin and Ethereum 1. Potential for appreciation. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum have shown the potential for significant price appreciation over time. If you invest in them with the expectation of long-term growth, it could be considered a form of good investment. Similar to investing in stocks, real estate or other assets. 2. Volatility. It's important to note that cryptocurrencies are highly volatile and their values can fluctuate significantly in a short period. This makes them riskier than traditional assets. However, some investors are willing to accept this risk for the potential rewards. 3. Diversification Including cryptocurrencies in your investment portfolio can provide diversification, which is a key component of a well-rounded investment strategy. Diversification can help spread risk. 4. Speculative investment for some investors, cryptocurrencies may be seen as speculative investments rather than a traditional store of value. In this context, they may be considered riskier and more akin to speculative or bad investments. 5. Research and strategy. How you approach cryptocurrency investments matters. Research a well-defined strategy and a clear understanding of your financial goals are crucial. Buying cryptocurrencies without a strategy or understanding can be akin to accumulating bad debt if you borrow money to invest recklessly. In conclusion, whether investing in Bitcoin and Ethereum is a good or bad choice depends on how you approach it, your financial goals, and your risk tolerance. It's important to treat cryptocurrency investments like any other investment. With due diligence, a clear plan, and an understanding of the risks involved, cryptocurrencies can be part of a diversified investment strategy, but they should not be treated as debt. And they come with their own unique set of risks and potential rewards. In the United States, Life insurance policies and their payouts are subject to specific tax rules, and they are primarily governed by the Internal Revenue Code, IRC. The relevant sections of the Internal Revenue Code that pertain to life insurance policy payouts and their taxation include 1. IRC Section 101. This section provides tax rules related to the exclusion of death benefits from gross income. In most cases, the death benefit paid to beneficiaries is income tax-free. This means that beneficiaries generally do not have to report life insurance death benefits as taxable income on their federal tax returns. 2. IRC Section 72E 
This section pertains to the taxation of annuities, including certain distributions from life insurance policies that have an annuity component. It outlines the tax treatment of periodic payments made to policyholders or beneficiaries. 3. IRC Section 7702 and 7702A These sections of the tax code provide guidelines and regulations for determining whether a Lee FE insurance policy qualifies as a life insurance contract for tax purposes. Meeting the criteria outlined in these sections is crucial for maintaining tax advantages associated with life insurance policies. 5. IRC Section 2035 to 2044. These sections cover estate tax rules. Related to life insurance policies and their inclusion in the taxable estate of the insured or the policyholder. It's important to note that the specific tax treatment of life insurance payouts and their beneficiaries can vary depending on the type of life insurance policy, the circumstances of the payout, and any changes in the tax code. Additionally, state tax laws may also come into play. For the most accurate and up-to-date information regarding the tax treatment of life insurance payouts and beneficiaries, it's advisable to consult with a qualified tax professional or financial advisor who is familiar with your individual situation and the current tax laws. Tax laws can change over time, so it's important to stay informed about any updates that may affect your specific circumstances.